Hi, I'm Dia, the textile specialist from SparkFun Electronics. And I'm Nick, the creative technologist here at SparkFun. And this is Electrocute, where we're going to share our favorite materials and techniques from the embedded electronics world. Each episode will focus on a new material to help your project stand out in the crowd. This is Zero. You might recognize him as the ghost dog from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Zero is made out of fiber optic fabric. Fiber optics are plastic strands that carry light from one end to another. And in this material, it's actually been woven into the fabric. That gives you something akin to a sparkly organza that's got an all over twinkling glow in dim light. What I really love about fiber optic fabric is how little electronics know how you need to use it. To eliminate your fabric, you're going to need an LED. This one has been uh, just pressed into the JST connector on a battery pack. If you want to do that, you're going to have to use a resistor. We use 330 ohm. For a long-term application, you're probably going to want to just snip the wire, solder that together, and heat shrink it. An easier way to get an LED illuminated is called a throwy. You'll just take a 2032 coin cell battery and you'll press it in between the legs of the LED. You want this hatch side towards the short leg on the LED. I should mention that we're using super bright LEDs. Uh, you can find those on our website. They're just brighter than other ones and the more brightness you get, the more light you're gonna see in your fabric and the better effect you'll have. So here's the full length of your fabric. On this end of the fabric, there's a bundle of fibers that's going to make it really easy to apply light to the end of all of them at the same time. This is heat shrink. It's a plastic tubing that shrinks when you apply heat to it. Press that over your bundle and then push your LED in on the other side. I'm just going to use a heat gun to apply heat to shrink this down. You can use a lighter held close or even a blow dryer turned up very high, although that's going to go pretty slowly. When you're applying your heat source to melt the heat shrink, be very careful of your fibers. Those are plastic and they can melt. If you see them moving and wiggling around a little bit on their own, like they've come to life, you'll want to pull back with the heat source and make sure you're applying it directly to the heat shrink. You may have noticed that even though your LED is lit up, you can't really see anything happening with the fabric. That's because the lights are on. A serious limitation of fiber optic fabric that you should be aware of is that the light's pretty dim, so you can see it beautifully in low light conditions, but in sunlight or full light conditions, you shouldn't expect to really see an effect. It is possible to light up your fiber optic fabric with different colors of light in the same piece, but in order to do that, you're going to have to cut this top piece of the fabric off, making sure not to cut any of the fibers underneath, and then rebundle the fibers into different groups for each light that you want to apply. You can cut this off at the little metal ferrule that comes on it, but you'll lose a little bit of length if you do that, and it's more trouble than it's really worth. The best bet is to just go ahead and find the line where you want to separate the fibers and then go ahead and just follow that up to the end here and then just cut it right there. And then try to see if you can uh, find the shortest fiber. I'll go ahead and make a cut here and then uh, I'm going to cut off a small piece of our heat shrink and put that over this bundle of fibers and then I'm going to shrink it down uh, using our heat gun. We'll just take our scissors and cut the very tip of this off so that we have a nice clean edge. And finally, uh, just like we did with the single LED, we're going to take a larger piece of shrink tube that fits over the LED and also over our small bundle of fibers. Make sure that the LED and the bundle of fibers are lined up end to end inside the larger piece of shrink tube. And then we'll hit that with the heat gun and shrink it down so that everything is tight together. The next step is to connect each of the LEDs to a coin cell battery, just like we did before. All of the strands run vertically all the way up the length of the fabric. So if you cut it vertically in between those strands, you'll maintain light all the way down from the LED down that section. If you cut it horizontally, however, you're cutting off access from all of those strands to the LED, and anything below where you've cut isn't going to light up anymore. To separate these sections, we're going to carefully pull apart those fibers and find where the line between them starts. You can also see these lines in the fabric. You want to cut between the fibers. Cutting it lengthwise won't stop it from lighting up. Even though this is all on one LED, I can definitely still cut it into more than one piece, and those individual pieces will continue to light up as long as they're connected to the LED. You can see that even though these are now three separate pieces, they light up, as does the red, where we've separated it into two separate pieces. I want to show you that if I cut the fabric horizontally, the bottom half immediately loses contact with that LED and doesn't light up anymore. 
Here's the piece that we just cut off of our original red section. This didn't light up, but that's only because it's no longer bundled and attached to an LED. You can rebundle it either by gathering the entire piece of fabric, heat shrinking that, and pressing an LED to the end if you don't mind this shape, or by carefully fraying this end until you've got enough fiber to ferrule. The fiber optic cables in this fabric are a little fragile, so you want to handle it gently. Anywhere that you get a scratch or a nick on the fibers, light's going to leak out and it'll make a bright spot in the fabric. As a matter of fact, on this particular piece, we've creased the fabric to show you the damage that that can cause. When you crease the fabric, it creates a stress point in the fibers and a lot of light leaks out there, creating sort of a line of light in your fabric. This can uh, actually work to your advantage. If you need a certain area of your project to be more bright, you can actually use a little bit of sandpaper or some other abrasive like a sanding sponge to go in and actually abrade certain areas of the fabric to make them brighter. Here we've used some tape to mask off sections of the fabric so that we can sand over it and leave nice clean lines in between the parts that we want abraded and the parts that we don't want abraded. As you can see, we did have some nice stripes come out up here. Unfortunately, because the stripes are so bright, we've lost all of the light here and there's not enough to continue down here and illuminate the polka dot area. So you can overdo it on the abrasion. There's only so much light coming into the fabric and if you let it all out up here, obviously you're cutting off the supply to lower in the fabric. There are a few more things you should know about fiber optic fabric. It's all right to get this section wet, but not the power supply. So when you're gently hand washing it, make sure that you take the battery out or at least hold it above the water while you're doing that. Then let it air dry. You don't want to iron the fiber optic fabric because the high heat can actually melt the fibers together and cause damage to the material. Thank you so much for watching Electrocute. We would love to get your feedback. If you have any questions or comments or have a material that you'd like us to talk about, leave a comment in the section below. See you next time.